Hi everyone, I'm Dave O'Connor from Panther Games. Welcome to Command Ops 2. This movie is designed to tell you what Command Ops 2 is, what it looks like, and how to play it. Command Ops 2 is a war game in which you take on the role of a commander of an army, brigade, division or corps. It's not a first person shooter, but a strategy game in which you'll be making decisions just like a real World War II commander. This is a startup screen for the game engine. We're going to start a new game. This is the core modules and the core engine you can download for free. It comes with these three scenarios. The tutorial is a good one to start with. As you can see, this is set in Belgium, in Germany, and it's in a historical context. It's um, early 45, um, at the tail end of the Battle of the Bulge, and our scenario is focused around the town of St. Vith, and we're going to take on the role of the 4th Armoured Division in their drive to capture St. Vith. Now this is a fictional scenario, but there are plenty of historical ones, and we sell a number of game modules with various historical scenarios. We're going to get started now and we're going to accept the options here as they are except we're going to play as the Allies. So what you see here is the battle map. It dominates the interface. We have three dialogues open here at the moment um, these are the controls, tools and orders dialogues. And down the bottom we have a toolbar. These buttons here will open up various dialogues as well. The battle map is a 2D vector map drawn on a 100 meter grid. Each of these grid lines that you see here represent one kilometer by one kilometer. You can zoom the map in using the scroll wheel of your mouse and zoom it back out. You can pan around or move around. You can go to the edge of the screen and it will scroll or you can right click and drag. Uh, the lines on the, on the map represent different terrain features. Here we have a minor river and we can test this out by right clicking on it and we can see the type of terrain it is and the various characteristics. Here we, here we have a minor road and here we have a railway. You also notice the woods. This, this feature here denotes some wooded terrain. Other features you might see over here we'll have a village. Here this is clear terrain but the different colour represent different height levels i.e. The, the Z feature on here which is and as you can see as you the lighter the colour the higher you are. So in effect this is a hill here with a village on top and it flows down towards the river. Now this little feature here it represents a heavy bridge. There are different types of crossings. This one over here for instance is just a potential crossing and the actual bridge has been blown. Crossings are very important in the game so it's a good idea to note where these are. On top of the battle map you'll find various icons. Here, these green ones here are our friendly units. They're the units you control and each of the icons will have a type symbol, a little unit information box, its designation area and its size symbol. On this one here you'll see there's a little flag and that indicates that it's a headquarters. And headquarters are very important and I'll be talking about those in more detail later. These grey symbols, they represent the enemy, the German units, but in fact they're actually in intelligence reports or intel reports. So they may or may not be accurate and I'll go into more detail about them later as well. Before we get stuck into our plan, 
I just wanted to talk a little bit about the dialogues. Now we've already talked about the fact that we've got these control, control dialogues here. We also have a number of other data dialogues and they're all accessible from the control buttons that you see on the toolbar at the bottom. We can click on one of these and it will open up a dialogue and here we've opened up the scenario briefing dialogue. We can manoeuvre that wherever we like or we can dismiss it and if we open it again it will remember where we were. So you can use this feature to configure the layout of the interface how you want it. You can even dry, drag the dialogue onto a second monitor and it will appear on that second monitor next time. Before we go any further, I'd like to talk about the way in which you can play the game. You could treat it like a real-time strategy or RTS game on steroids and simply lasso your forces and then give them an order and then we can just run the game and they will develop their own plan and as you can see in this case they're going to move in on these little routes to get towards the objective that we've assigned them. Now you might also notice that they've chosen, the AI has chosen a formation in this case they're moving in more or less uh, uh, on parallel lines here towards that objective. They'll end up spread out over that area. That, that's a valid uh, option to do, but it's not really the way we intended to play the game. Another simple way of approaching uh, Command Ops is to use its powerful artificial intelligence, its AI, to do most of the heavy lifting for us. Here we have Combat Command Alpha, the 4th Armoured Division. It's a brigade level headquarters and it commands all our on-map forces at the moment. We can see from the order of battle display that it has an armoured battalion, it has a mechanised infantry battalion and it has a foot infantry battalion. We could issue orders to all of these individually, but in this simple approach we're going to issue a simple attack order for the brigade as a whole to our first objective here. Now I could set a plethora of options here but I'm not going to. I'm just going to accept the defaults and let the AI manage everything else. I'm going to start the game running and we can run the game at different speed levels. I've got it at the normal setting at the moment. We could go fast, we could go slow, or we could even pause the game. One of the things you notice here as we're running is that the AI has received our orders and has developed a plan and now has started to issue orders down to its subordinates and this will occur first to um, its first level of subordinates, the brigade, uh, sorry, the battalion uh, headquarters. We've got the first 318th now. Has, you might notice that on the unit icon you'll see a type symbol and then a little unit information box and as these go pink that means they're processing their orders that they've just received. And we can see now in in this particular unit here is got the symbol for forming up and now the, the fat arrow indicates that it's conducting its assault. And if we were to select all these units we can see that these are going to assault along this route here and end up deploying over here. As they uh, move forward uh, the enemy will start to engage them and uh, we might see uh, fire lines uh, occurring on the map as we can from the enemy on the um, hill over here. We'll have an engagement indicator at the bottom right. In this case this unit is receiving fire. Um, a red indicator indicates it's taking casualties and a blue one means it's firing. So the battle is being joined there. We could pause it for there and we could inspect, uh, sorry, inspect that unit, have a look at its data, we might have a look at its log 
and we can see here all the things that are happening. It's been taking casualties and it's been engaging and halting and even retreating for a period. So in this way we can issue an order and we can observe and watch the battle unfold. So it's a simple approach but it has the disadvantage that you tend to end up watching the battle unfold, letting the AI run most things, and you don't get the most out of the uh, experience as you possibly could. It's not our recommended approach, but it is still a valid approach. But if you want to be like a real operational commander, then you will want to get a bit more involved, and you'll want to issue orders two levels down. Most players issue orders to the battalion headquarters and to the odd company-sized unit for special tasks. They also approach the planning process a bit more seriously. Now I don't want to put you off here. This is still a game and we're still out to have a good time and enjoy ourselves. So let's start by looking at what we've got to do. Our briefings window gives our side a particular briefing from our boss. And in here, it, he tells us that basically we've got to drive up to St. Vith as quickly as possible. We've got to force a crossing here at Steinbrook and then drive up the road through Brettfield, St. Vith. We also need to make sure that we clear the enemy from this high ground here, otherwise we won't progress very far. So we can have a more detailed look at our objectives here. Currently, we've just got the Steinbrook active. It's active from now until the end of the scenario and it tells us that we get 13 victory points for this. We get most of those for occupation and some for completion. The other objectives are here at Brettfield and St Vith. Notice St Vith is worth 38 victory points. It's our major prize and we get most of those points for occupation and it's active at day 20600 so we want to get it. We've got 24 hours to get there and we want to do so in, sh in short order and maximise our chance of achieving a victory. We've got a victory meter here and that will show us how we're progressing throughout the game but it's based on intelligence data on the enemy not actual data so it may vary from the real thing so bear that in mind. The next thing we need to do is work up a plan for our first objective. I'm going to zoom in here a little and it's important to note that the terrain along here, this river here, the Ore River, is impassable to our motorised units. So we're going to issue an attack order to our 51st Battalion and we do that by selecting the attack order here or holding the A key down and I'm going to hold the shift key down and place its first waypoint here and then its second one here. Now notice that the waypoint prior to the objective is always the forming up place. It's where our assault troops will shake out into assault formation and they will assault in a direct line from there. But one thing to, rem to note here is that if we select this unit here and we choose a um, shortest path for it to the objective, we'll notice that it's forced to go by via the crossing and that's the way they'll go. So they're going to head down towards here and then along there. That's all well and good. Click that off. We'll go back to our task here and we'll open up its task data. Now one of the things that we need to be aware of is that currently it's 0600. Dawn won't be until 0800, it's when sun, the sun comes up, and it's only then that our artillery will be able to be sighted and target the enemy accurately. So we don't necessarily want to head off straight away. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set this up so that it assaults at, and I'm just going to, I'm going to put it down for 0730. So it will start to assault, and I'm hoping that by the time it gets to a roundabout here, the dawn will come up. So when it crests that knoll, we should start to see 
the enemy uh, with the morning sun coming up and lighting the way. I'm going to also specify that the force attacks in successive lines. That will be each unit will be one behind the other, but each unit themselves will be will be deployed in a line. And I've chosen that formation so that we can get maximum firepower up front, uh, but give us depth so that if the front force is uh, pushed back, the other ones can continue on. We're going to set the aggression level to max so that we'll increase our propensity for firing and we'll increase the rate of fire as well. And I don't mind burning up our ammunition at this stage. We've got plenty of it, so I'm going to put that up to max as well. I'm going to put our artillery direct support only because our force here has, if we have a look at it on the OB, it has a mortar unit. And I don't want that mortar unit firing in support of anybody else. So I just want it focused on our battalion attack. The other settings I'm, I'm going to put in here um, is that I'm going to tell it to secure the crossing if the crossing was primed. It might, it's not, we don't think it's primed at the moment. If it was, we would see a pink background on the crossing. But in case the enemy have in fact primed it and we just don't know yet. I'm telling the force here to make sure they rip out the demolitions as they go across. Now, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that one. Let's go and choose our first 318th battalion and let's give it an attack order as well. I'm just going to hold the A key down and I'm going to angle, I'm going to ask for this, this battalion to form up and to attack along the right. This force here being infantry, if I choose the shortest path um, from uh, to there, you notice they will go in a straight line. So I'm confident that they will be able to deploy along here, cross the river and then go into the woods and they'll clear the enemy in that line. And that will leave the crossing itself for the 51st. Now, I'm going to uh, edit this data and I'm just going to hold the shift key down as I uh, open up another attack dialog for it. And I'm going to, again, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to set up hit, its assault to start a little bit earlier. And the reason I'm doing that is because I know these guys are going to move slower. And so they need a little bit of a head start here so that they can come up to the same amount of um, position when the 51st is going to be hitting the crossing. I'm going to set this artillery direct support only, get it to secure the crossing. I'm going to do the same with the um, uh, settings that I had for the other one. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I've got my two lead battalions who are going to be conducting the attack on the first objective finished. But I want to give these fellows here some fire support, direct fire support, and I'm going to choose our flak unit down here. And this force here is equipped with these quad 50 caliber half tracks. And these machine guns on here are primarily designed for anti-aircraft, but they're dual purpose and they can provide good, effective, fairly long range fire support. And that's the role I'm going to employ them in at the moment. And I'm going to give them an order to defend. And I'm going to position them on this knoll. So here's our task for these at the moment. And I'm going to get them to deploy to this position here. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. We'll clear the decks for it. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. I'm positioning it on the knoll here so that it can fire across to Lomas Vila and interdict or suppress any enemy that are trying to 
either move down this road here to support the bridge itself or to fire on our troops trying to get there. I'm going to tell this force here to use an avoidance path and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want this force driving up the road up here in front of the other enemy and get there and I, we can use the, the pathing tools here and I'll show you when I click an avoidance path you can see that the force is going to wheel around this way and avoid coming close to these fellows here. Um, if I wanted to get rid of that, I could assign a particular movement path to it, but I'm quite happy with that because the, fire, the observation and fire will be blocked by this line of trees here. So that's pretty good. I'm going to set its aggro and rate of fire to max, and um, I'm going to leave that at that. I'm, that's good for firing against anti-personnel fire, but I need a fire support unit that can engage any armoured vehicles as well, um, and it has to have uh, a decent range. Options are, are limited here at the moment to the 35th Tank Battalion. I'm going to choose the B Company. I'm going to give it a defend task here as well. I'm going to orient it, change its facing to here. I'm going to uh, set its values here to max. Um, I'm going to change its formation into a line and change its depth a little and I'm quite happy with I might just move the um, sorry I might just move that f a little forward so that they're just on the edge of the knoll and I'm happy with that so now I've got our two attacks, I've got our fire support. I'm now going to look at our reserve. A good commander always maintains a reserve, and if he commits it, he forms another. So our reserve at the moment is the rest of the 35th Tank Battalion. I'm just going to order it to defend, and I'm going to get it defend in situ, and I'm going to choose the formation in situ. That means that the units will stay put, they won't... They won't move around to adopt any particular formation, I'll just stay put. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm now going to um, select the, uh, the headquarters, the brigade headquarters, Combat Command Alpha, and I'm going to give it a defend in situ as well. Now that means that any other forces that I haven't given an order to now will also will have a defend in situ order as well. But I've got two big artillery units, the 22nd and the 66th. I'm going to leave the 66th under command of Combat Command Alpha and so that it can provide artillery support on the AI's request. In other words, when any of our forces up here get into trouble and they need some support, the 66th will be available to deliver that. But I'm going to take charge of the 22nd and I'm going to personally give its order and I'm going to order it to bombard um, which is this one here and I'm going to bombard this particular area here and I'm choosing to bombard this area here because I want to suppress these forces here and I want to prevent or hinder or delay any move by forces from Lomas Vila to support the crossing. In other words, I'm using this to check the enemy at this position here. Now, at the default duration for a bombardment is 11 minutes, I'm going to increase this and make this one hour. And just type the control key to get that down to there. But I'm going to delay its start and I'm going to and we'll just so here we've got it delayed now till eight o'clock so basically at dawn so it it will come along and interdict those forces there in fact we may even do that a little bit earlier we may make that So in other words, even if our forces over here 
crest this area here and, the, and get observed by these forward elements, I don't want the enemy then reacting straight away. So the artillery will come in at 7.40 and go for an hour. And that should bring us enough protection in that initial onslaught and we'll then be able to reallocate that force via the fire support tab which you can see here and if I if I click on that force after the orders when the orders have been sent when I start the game running we'll see its details down here I'm going to keep that aside here and I'm going to just check my filters down here and see the units without any orders and I should see none and I do so now I know I've issued all my orders to all my force we can get going so I'm now going to start the game running but just before I do that I want to emphasize the fact that while you can sit back and watch and just observe and let the AI manage everything it's a good idea here to have a few things in mind about what you expect to happen and what you're going to do if things don't go the way you expect so if we have a look at the prime if you like the risk factors here for us the problems that we may face or may encounter are that the enemy may pull back and they may hold on to uh, withdraw their forward elements and, and try and hold on to this position here in the village uh, dominating the crossing and we'll have to keep an eye on whether that happens there's not much we can do about that with our assault forces once they're underway because they're not they're, they're basically going to be going as fast as they can but we can interdict them with artillery provided we've got any free so we'll just have to keep an eye on that the other things that can happen is that our assault forces get bogged down by enemy fire and are forced to retreat and when that happens you need to be alert to it and look for the threat that's happening that's causing them to either stop or retreat and then try and take that threat out or suppress it in some way with your artillery we'll go on to that in more detail but they're the things you sort of should be alert to at the start and I'm going to now start the game running at normal speed. We've got three speed levels here. Some of the things you need to be aware of. We've got now the forces will be moving and shaking out into their forming up place. This little symbol on the unit information box is the reorg one. And we can see these fellows now moving into position. If we were to select the 51st and have a look at its forces, we can see them there now. They're going to be going, remember, in a successive line. We've got our tanks have moved up into their fire support position. The flak unit is still lagging a little bit behind, but it should be there soon. It's still only 6.45. We've got the 318th here. And if we click on this fellow here and we come down here and we select the next one underneath it, we can see the actual task the unit is doing. I'm just going to pause the game there for a second and we're going to have a look at the actual task data for that. For that. And we can see here that he's going to be choosing a left echelon. And that's not a bad ta formation to choose. The left echelon will see the force as it's moving along here angled back this way. So that means that as he's anticipating most of the enemy fire is going to be either directly ahead or to his left so that will give him the best fire support that he can have for that particular assault so that's a good choice and a good option to choose we'll just dismiss that now and we'll continue play now we can have a look at our artillery up here, it's now bombarding. We can... Uh, we haven't seen any enemy at the moment moving down direct, and that's a good thing. We can see that we've got... I'm just going to pause the game here for a moment. Now, 
we want to have a look at this force here check out what he's doing and what's happening to him so he's being bombarded and he's also engaging the enemy the engagement indicator here the little the little yellow uh, light that you see here indicates that he is actually um, taking fire and if we see it go red it means he's taking casualties if it's blue it means he's actually firing at the moment we can see that uh, if we let this play a little bit longer we might see a fire line we can see the fire lines coming we'll slow it down and you can see him firing now And the same for this force here, but it's also taken some casualties. And this force here is is not as well armoured as uh, this force. The, the half tracks are open top, so they uh, can be subject to artillery bombardment and take more casualties than a closed-in tank. But both are still vulnerable to heavy guns. So they're trading shots over here and keeping the enemy over in Lomasville tied down. I'm going to speed the, the play up a little. I'm going to stop it there for a sec. I'm going to change the information box. We can do that down here via, via uh, this button here or the function keys. And F2 shows us our route status. The green arrow means good, so that means we're, we're okay. But you notice this yellow one here? That means this guy's retreating. Now, retreat is a controlled withdraw movement backwards, if you like. And that's probably in keeping with the fact that the first 318th has pushed the enemy out of their frontal positions and they're now withdrawing back to here. If we have a look at our artillery and check its time, um, it's 8.12, it's going to finish at 8.39, so he's still got a job to do. We don't really have much alternatives. We could come along and take command of the 66th, but if we have a look at what the 66 is doing from the AI, he's already attacking this enemy over here. So, in, in fact, he's probably doing what we would do anyway. So we'll leave that as it is at the moment. And there, go, there goes the 66 bombarding the objective at Steinbrook and uh, and having a telling effect on the enemy. These are big guns and uh, they do a lot of damage against soft targets which is what most of the infantry uh, in front of them is. Now we can see that the engineers have been pushed forward. Whenever you put a secure crossing, if you've got engineers, they will be in the front and their job is basically to try and make sure that that crossing, if it was primed, is now disarmed. Um, it looks like it hasn't been primed and so they're now the forces hole is pushing you notice the green square here that indicates that this particular force I'll just pause that for a moment this this particular force is uh, halting and um, a halt is a controlled reaction by the force and it usually occurs when they've taken fire or they may do so if they wish to deploy their um, heavy weapons um, which uh, are required to fire, um, but in this case it's probably because they're, they're receiving fire. And when they're halted they can still fire back, um, they'll probably stay there for a few minutes until either the threat is, is moved on or they um, start their assault back again. But you notice that while they've halted, the mechanised infantry company that was originally behind them has now pushed further forward. You can see how he's in his line formation and he's now clearing this village and doing a pretty good job. The engineers now have come back from their halt and pushed further forward. If we go back to F1 we can see that the 51st Battalion Headquarters has issued a new order and these guys are receiving it. By, you can tell that by the pink background of their task. They are now moving, and so basically what they're doing is they're deploying, redeploying on the objective, and we can see the 51st now over here coming forward, and he's going to bring 
himself into the position here and they'll adopt a defensive position. The first 318th company here, if we have a look at have a look at him, we can see that he's now reorganizing there. Um, with an attack that goes in, there's normally a, a sequence of tasks that are performed. They'll form up in the assembly place, they'll assault. When they get onto the objective, they'll do a final reorg. And that's where the force, because they often get dispersed and disorganised and their cohesion drops down, they do the reorg here to regain cohesion. And it represents the units manoeuvring back into position and, and checking in and, and reallocating ammunition and that type of thing. So that all happens in this phase. After that, they will then go on the defence. All right, I'm going to stop it there now and have a quick review of the situation. It's 0931. You notice now we're in, in daylight and we've got clear skies. So our artillery is in its prime time now. And we've got our reserve down here. I want to consider releasing this now for an attack on to Lomas Vila. The major consideration I've really got is what is this enemy doing here? If we have a look at this force here, and it's the 112th Panzer Jager Battalion, which in reality, though, it's only a company. The Germans had a tendency at the stage of the war to inflate the size of their forces. And it has Stugs. We reckon there's only two left. If we have a look at its uh, strength, we can see that it's degraded already. Uh, green means when, when a force information box is all green, it means it's at full strength. Yellow, it's getting towards half. And red, it, it, it's in bad shape, like this one over here. So we know this force has already been degraded significantly. If we have a look at We'll just have a look at the route status. We can see it's halted. It's probably been firing. The question is whether it will continue down. At the moment, B Company of the 318th has halted and is engaging that unit probably with its uh, bazookas. It's a fairly close range encounter. According to our occupied area, we're right on top of those tanks. I think we'll be good there. The B Company looks okay. So I think we could be safe in saying that we can de deploy our tanks into Steinbrook, ready to start assaulting the Lomasvila. So I'm just going to zoom back out a little. I'm going to select the um, tank battalion here, and I'm going to give it an attack order. And I'm going to deploy it here, and then I'm going to tell it to attack into here. I'll just pull that back a little. That's about right. The orders delay is about half an hour for it to get its orders and then start moving. So its estimated start time is 10.01. Uh, I think we've allowed a little bit here, uh, a leeway up the top here. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to specify an assault at. Uh, I don't need to really coordinate this with anything. I'll let them get there as soon as they can. And that way the AI will start to assault as soon as this force shakes out into its assault formation at the FUP. It won't waste any time in there. And there's a good reason for doing that because forces that... Uh, identified as forming up are usually raised up in the priority level for enemy artillery fire and are vulnerable at that stage so you don't want to waste time in there. Okay I'm quite happy with the, leaving everything else here to the default at this stage and I'm going to click and restart play. Now if we have a look at its orders we can see that the battalion has now received its orders and it's going to do a move along the road 
and now the orders will start to trickle down to the companies and we'll get started. might just speed that up a little. We can see the, th the 318th is done, now we can see the tanks moving, I'll just slow that back down a bit. Uh, we can see them moving up in um, uh, road column formation. And you might hear that sound here, that's an airstrike that's been done. You'll see airstrikes appear here and you get to the opportunity to actually specify the target and I was a bit distracted at that stage but the AI stepped in and employed it for me so that's all well and good now we can see that the tanks are shaking out into their assault and they're starting that and I'll just slow that down now I'm gonna have a look at our artillery at the moment it's been resting I really want to support this attack with a fire and I'm going to select this position here and I'm going to give it a short bombardment um, of around about 16 minutes Now you'll notice here I've got to avoid friendlies, so if the friendlies get too close it will stop the firing as it's done right now even though there's a few minutes left. If you wish to take the risk you can check that avoid friendlies off and they will keep firing regardless but it's not recommended when you're supporting an attack, it's probably best on defence. So we can see the tanks engaging the enemy here, they're pushed in. I'm going to stop it now and I'm going to have a look at how we can now shape the rest of our forces. You might notice that the 318th here has crossed, the headquarters has crossed the river and it's going to move up into the objective area for its, the rest of the battalion and it will then go on the defence. I'm going to leave that go ahead but I want to send a force now to try and drive up to Brettfield. They could get interdicted from up here but I don't know how these reports here on the enemy are uh, current. Um, so there probably is a force, but I want to commit a portion of my force up here for an attack. I've got a tank battalion, a tank company, and I'm going to hold the control key down and select Alpha Company. And the two of these I'm going to send on a little reconnaissance mission. And I, I'm going to send it up to Brettfield. I'm going to allow it to conduct an attack if it sees it, but I really, actually, I'm only going to want it to fight if it has no option. So I'm going to set the aggro to minimum. So that means if there is an enemy there, it'll actually avoid it. I'm going to make sure that it, um, everything else I think is fine. I'm going to leave that as it is. I'll start the ball rolling again and you'll notice here the whole battalion now has received new orders and the reason for that is that 51st has had some forces taken out of it and it has to work out a new plan for the remaining force. They're still, the rest of them are still hold, they're on hold when it's just a white background. I'm keeping them there basically as my new reserve. I've already committed the 35th, so I'm re reconstituting a new one, and that, in this case, is the 51st. I'm going to pause this for the moment, and I'm also going to have a look at my reinforcements. And so, I don't get my first reinforcements until about two o'clock in the morning. So we've still got effectively another 13 hours to go before we get any more reinforcements. So that limits our options for the pursuing beyond Brettfield. I don't think we'll have the force necessarily to do that. So 
So the 31st is now moving up. It's secured its objective here, although it really hasn't cleared the enemy out of the side. So we probably need to deal with that. Our force that we can do with that uh, is the 51st. I'm going to uh, just stop the game here for the moment, and I'm going to select these two units. I'm going to plunder them from our reserve at the moment. And I'm going to order them to do a supplementary attack to clear this Lomas Vila in support of the tanks. I'm pressing the F6 key, and that will look at our morale. But I'm now, uh, it's a cohesion, but I'm looking at our fatigue, and as we can see, some of these forces now are starting to tire. The enemy's tiring even more so uh, as it's been subjected to constant attack. Uh, but these forces here are probably the freshest we've got. And I'm going to manoeuvre these round for an attack to try and unhinge the enemy. I want to have a look at what my options are. They're both motorised, so I want to check to see whether or not I can manoeuvre them around to position down here and then attack up through this line. To see if I can do that, I'm going to select the um, motorised uh, uh, movement path and I'm going to see if, on, see if I can go from here down to here and what route, and it tells me, the bit tells me it can't. So I'll try and see if I can, I can, but I've got to go via this way. So there's no way through this area here. So that rules that option out. So I'm going to, Turn off that tool and I'm going to select an attack and I'm simply going to position it here and drive through to here. So I'm not going to worry too much about uh, its uh, values, I'll leave those as defaulted. Well, this is something you need to watch. I've given this this chap here an order, and I told it to get to uh, Brettfield, and uh, you might have a look at the fact that it's going to choose this wide outflanking manoeuvre. Um, that was probably um, a uh, lack of uh, direction on my part, and I should have specified that uh, instead of uh, the default avoidance route, it should choose uh, the quickest route. So. Having having done that now, I've got to I've got to make a decision. I don't really want it wandering out here unsupported. I want to change that. I'm going to select this force, and I'm okay. Here we have the order here, and I'm going to tell it to choose to. In fact, no, I'm going to cancel that move altogether and I'm going to give a new move order for it and I'm going to tell it to come down by here and I'm going to specify some waypoints for it. I'm going to put it back its aggro to minimum and I'm going to allow it to attack if it needs to and allow it to bypass if it, can, if it has to as well. And bypass means that effectively if it finds an enemy blocking its position, it will try and choose an alternate route at that stage. So it will have some options, but I effectively want to constrain it. speed play up here a bit. Now you'll notice that we've got our supplementary attack um, being staged here and now they're coming forward and they're forcing the enemy out of the position. You'll notice that our artillery has been firing in support, that's the, the 66, the AI support for them. Let's choose our 22nd again and let's help this along 
and we're going to provide another bombardment on the enemy position here and hopefully force these forces to rout and flee their battle. If we have a look at the enemy, in fact, that's exactly what we're, what is occurring here. The enemy are retreating and being punished heavily. We might shift our fire again back into this spot here. Really give them a bit of a working out. Right, I'm going to stop it at this stage. I think um, we've moved uh, from the position where we started. We've achieved at this stage both of our objectives. You can tell that by the little green border around the objective. If we were to bring up our objectives window, we can see that they're now green, which indicates the fact that they've been achieved. And as they um, uh, occupy that position for a period of time. We can see we've already got 0.5 of a victory point for occupying this. As the time progresses, that will increase and we'll see this little bar here fill up with green. So we're doing pretty good. I think on, on the whole, we've achieved our objective so far. We're at 1500 hours. We've got both of our objectives here have been achieved on time. Uh, the Brettfield one, we've got to achieve that in the morning. Given our errant behaving uh, uh, force here, I shouldn't have, I should have uh, unchecked that bypass because it obviously decided to bypass these fellas. Uh, that was my mistake. Um, and you do make mistakes as a commander, but the value of a good commander is not that he makes mistakes, but that he learns from those mistakes and recovers well. So next time I play this, I'll make sure that I get them into position here and maybe wait a little before I commit these until I've cleared this area here. So that was the lesson I've learned from that. I think the future prognosis is looking pretty good. Our reinforcements will come uh, in the morning and we will clear the enemy out of the way. So I hope you've enjoyed that little demonstration of how the game is played. I've tried to impart a little bit of uh, the how you do things but I do encourage you to have a look at our tutorial movie which will cover that in much more detail and it will go through the military decision making process how to do a proper detailed assessment and how to manage your forces to their best effect but uh, I think we'll leave it for now and thank you for watching